So the last session today, right? Almost the end of the our conference. You already learned and heard pretty much everything. Looks like nothing left for me to talk about Spring, but I believe Kir is going to impress you. So we don't have too much time, like 30 minutes. Let's roll. My name is Artem Bilan. I work for Pivotal as Spring engineer, mostly for project all about messaging, like Spring integration, MQP, Kafka, Spring Cloud Stream. And also together with Google Cloud Frameworks team, I contribute to Spring Cloud GCP project. Hi, my name is Kier, and thank you for coming to this, to this talk. We're, we're really happy you're here. Um, I work at Google, I, and specifically I spend a lot of time working on Cloud PubSub, which is Google's native messaging middleware service. Um, sometimes we speak of it as ingestion and delivery service, so it's kind of a happy mix of, of Rabbit and Kafka. Um, of course, to me, from my perspective, this means that, that you're here for the most important talk of the day, because this is the Cloud PubSub talk. Right. So uh, good choice, good choice. So <laughs> what we'll talk about is, is how you can take an event streams um, application global. Uh, which is an interesting property of Cloud PubSub. So we'll tell you about what's special about Cloud PubSub as, as, a, as a particular um, messaging middleware service, as well as explain how Cloud Stream in particular just makes it super accessible, um, where you don't really have to worry that it's under, um, under the hood. So uh, a couple words about why we're here together. Um, this, the, Cloud PubSub is integrated with Spring. There's a binder there, and it's sort of part of a broader collaboration between Google and, and Spring, which uh, is an open source project started about half, uh, maybe a year ago now. Um, you, can, you can check it out. You can throw it in your palm file. Um, I think we're now uh, at version 1.1 finally, right? Just in time? Yeah, yeah, it is. And this project became a part of Spring Cloud release train, so your dependency management is much easier now. Just in time, because yeah. I, I was feeling yeah. a little iffy about putting 1.0 on the second yeah, slide. Yeah, we did some good improvements so far. All right, so you can, um, if you want to learn about all of this, which is just sort of an effort to take all the fun managed services that GCP, uh, Google Cloud Platform offers, and make them accessible within Spring, you can come. Um, to Ballroom A tomorrow, Wade Sang will give a talk. Um, so we'll, we'll try to get out of your way so you have more time to rest up before 10.30 tomorrow. In the meantime, let's dive into um, how Cloud Streams works with, works with PubSub. Anybody who wasn't here for the last talk? OK, so brief review of what right. Cloud Stream <laughs> is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a framework for event-driven services. So if you can take your problem and start thinking of it as a set, of, um, a set of functions they take an event in, or a message, right, just a bit of data, um, and either just take it, do something with it, and stop, or emit this event or produce it, or do both, pro take an event in, transform it, and emit another event, or maybe a transformed version of the same event. That's kind of one bit of it. And then, um, uh, then you can imagine that there's this magical middleware that makes these events go. Right, between the services. Um, it's magical because in the middle there's something called a binder. This binder says that you don't have to worry about how your function gets these events, right? How your application gets the events and how it emits them. It just says, binder, you know, I, I'm going to listen to this thing in the binder and I'm going to emit this thing to the binder. Um, and the binder takes care of, of what the middleware is. And of course, in this case, the middleware is going to be Cloud PubSub. Those of you who were in the last talk, you heard about the others. You can use Kafka, you can use Rabbit, you can use um, a bunch of others. So that's the, um, that's the brief overview of the framework and the pattern. And so what I'll do now is, is talk about the specifics of the middleware and what it enables you to do. So, um, Google Cloud PubSub is, um, uh, has, has sort of this basic functionality. You have a publisher application um, that produces messages or events, right? You encode them as messages, and you publish them to a topic. Then they're durably persistent, and they're acknowledged back to the publisher. In this case, publisher knows it's done. It can move on. The data is safe. On the other side, you have a subscriber application. In Kafka world, you call it a consumer application, um, which creates a subscription to the topic, and then um, it, uh, it uh, requests 
uh, messages from the uh, subscription and gets them at least once per subscriber. Of course, you can parallelize both. So you can do these things at vast scale. I think our internal service just uh, sailed by maybe a terabyte a second or something, so it, so it, so it, so it does scale. On the, on the consumer side or subscription side, you can do the same. Okay, so that's great. This subscription model fits fully to our Spin Cloud Stream uh, consumer group abstraction. So when you have several consumer applications in the same consumer group, only one of them will consume the same one, one message. Right. And of course, you can have multiple applications consuming the same data, right? So you can have multiple subscriptions to the same, subscriptions to the same topic. Um, in each one, uh, so we guarantee that each message is delivered at least once per subscription to at least one subscriber. So that's kind of the basic, the basic API um, that, that we expose. Um, there are two interesting things about the service itself. One is that it's global. The other one is the scaling model. So I want to talk about this global thing. I call it global delivery and local performance. Um, what this um, sort of, let me walk you through what this means. Let's say you're a large company that serves a user base spread across the United States, maybe Europe, maybe Asia, um, and maybe you're in India, right? Um, you want your front ends to be in every single region so that your users are seeing low latency. Now, you're going to deploy, in this case, we have three separate regions at the top of your front ends. Let's say, um, let's say your application just sort of tracks user activity, right? And events are coming from mobile phones, or maybe they're coming from laptops. Um, they're hitting your front ends, and your front ends just need to persist that data as soon as possible and return the request, right? So you deploy this application, and um, you deploy your front end application. Um, could be your Spring, Spring app um, in US West, somewhere on the West Coast, somewhere on the East Coast, and in Europe. Um, all these applications have to know is that there's a thing called pubsub.googleapis.com anywhere in the world, and they send a request to it. Google's global load balancer finds the nearest data center running an instance of PubSub and uh, forwards you there. The message gets persisted as close to the publish call as possible. That's happening whether, whether you're uh, publishing from the outside of Google or within Google, doesn't really matter. So then we're able to uh, return um, to, the, uh, to your front end, and therefore you can return and respond to your, to your client um, on, on a device uh, very quickly. So that's local performance. The global bits you're already seeing, a, none of your applications have to know about regional endpoints, right? You didn't have to set up regional stacks as you would usually. Um, you just have one single URL or post name that you need to think about. Secondly, um, all of these applications are publishing to the same resource or topic. Again, configuration is the same uh, across all the regions. You didn't have to change anything. On the subscriber side, a similar thing is happening. You're talking to, no matter where you put your subscriber, you can have sort of one team that's working in the US, one team that's working in Europe. They're deploying in different places. Maybe you have you know, an application on premises in your data center here and um, something in, in Google Cloud Platform. Again, you're talking to the same, um, to the same host name um, and you, you create a subscription and just ask, mess ask for messages. PubSub does the job of collation. Yes, sir. The order is not guaranteed, and we're going to get to that's, this. That's the next step. Right. So, so anyway, so this kind of scheme gets you very sort of simple, simple, um, uh, simple global deployment, which is why we call the talk, which is why we call the talk global, global event streams. If you're dealing, if you're doing something across the world, super easy. You're not thinking about rep your application strategy. You're not thinking about how are you going to put all of your data together, it's just it's always together, no matter what. And so this is really great for our Spring Cloud Stream microservice. We don't need to care about too much configuration options mm -hmm. or code, anything, right? So our microservice is really micro. Indeed. Yeah, so you'll see that soon in demo. And you'll see a bit more of this in, the, in speaking to the ordering question in, in, in terms of our scaling model. So PubSub's motto and, and MO in life is to maximize throughput above all else. We want to get as much data, or really all data, through the system as quickly as possible. And so the scaling model is, is essentially you can have as many subscribers in parallel as you have messages in the world. We don't give you partitions. We don't give you sort of shards. We say, request a message from us and tell us when you're done. And we'll keep track of that single message's lifetime. 
What this means is that each message processor can sort of live in isolation, and they can do things in parallel. When that's happening, obviously you can't have order, because you're not forcing your consumers to sort of relate to each other. You're not saying, OK, you get this partition, let's say. You get this shard. You just get one message. Um, what, this, what this does is, as I said, above all else, it maximizes throughput if you want to. It makes writing stateless apps really, really easy. Right? If you just want to write a piece of code that grabs a message, does something to it, throws it back in, it can be completely stateless. It can, you know, it can be killed as soon as it's done with a single message. You can spin up a billion of them as you wish. Um, so statelessness and scale is, is really easy with this model. What is hard, though, is, is um, certain types of stateful applications. If your application needs to know that it has seen all the data for, let's say, a key of some kind that's, that exists in the world up to a time, you have to do some work. So, um, that's okay, so that looks like it doesn't fit our Spring Cloud Stream partitions abstraction, but it's not requirement anymore actually in the framework. So there are, I believe, a bunch of use cases where Google pops up fit exactly. Well. Exactly. As, I, as I've said, for some applications, you have to do a bit of work. Um, so you can throw your data into a database of some kind to, 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 to order it. So that's kind of this global, the, the, the global nature of PubSub with local performance and, and the, um, the scaling model are two things that are worth knowing about, um, about the specifics of the middleware. So now we're going to try to tell you a bit about how Spring Cloud Stream just makes it, makes you not have to think about it once you've decided on what to, which middleware to use. Um, and we thought we'd show it to you in this demo where, um, around taxi cabs. So what we have is a data set where um, a bunch of cabs were recorded, uh, were sort of sending their telemetry, so locations, cab ID, sort of number of people, basic things. We recorded this for about a week uh, from, a, from, from um, originally it was for in New York. And now we have a, a public topic that just kind of replays this data uh, for, for demo purposes. So we thought, okay, let's build a simple app that takes that giant pipe and just filters it down to something that, that is nearby a location, right? We're, we're somewhere in this square here. Um, let, let's, let's consume this data, filter down as you would if you're, say, building a, a ride-sharing app um, or a demo for a conference. Um, so we start here. This is our input. Um, we create a subscription to a topic. We're going to call our location, uh, our subscription locations, and we're going to grab this public project, PubSub public data. What's really neat is that you're talking to a global managed service, so there's really just one PubSub public data topic in the entire world, and you can get it for yourself if you wish. You can just listen to this data. You can do this on your laptop. Um, and then you can grab a single message from it just to see what's happening. And it's, uh, you, you're getting, as promised, these JSON blobs, latitude, okay. longitude, um, timestamp. And this JSON model is pretty cool for Spring Cloud Stream because it's type of data which is mostly used around the world. and it's transferable between different protocols that we don't need only Java. Right. And so from this point, I was like, oh, I told him, tell me what you can do with this in Spring Cloud. So um, um, before, I forget about this slide, just, to, just so you get a sense, right? This, this stream is, um, it peaks around somewhere above 3,500 events a second. So if you just want to play around, there's a little bit of scaling you may think about. So um, it's, there, there's, there's something. Um, to consider here. All right, so let's see, let's see what our tome has uh, come up with. Right, because it's spring conference. What we hear just to see some spring code, of course. Okay, so what I have here is simple, very simple spring cloud stream application. Thanks, thanks to Oleg, he pretty covered me with everything what related to spring cloud stream. <laughs> So, of course, this is uh, every uh, microservice in Spring is Spring Boot application, and uh, all the magic is done through auto configuration behind the scene uh, using particular dependencies in our class path. Uh, what is interesting here, like mentioning that, enable binding. This is pretty familiar. One more enable annotation in, like in many other Spring projects, uh, as uh, enable Kafka, enable Rabbit, or even enable transaction management. What is interesting to this uh, annotation that it requires from us some kind of contract 
which uh, going to make our microservice uh, concrete type of uh, Spring Cloud Stream application like processor, source, and sync. In this case, we're going to make it as processor because we would like to consume cab locations, uh, filter them to our hard-coded square, and return to somewhere else. Um, the logic we do through a couple other Spring Cloud Stream annotations, where Stream Listener is uh, creating for us um, underneath Listener to particular input, and then to allow us to produce result of our filtering to some output. So as you see, there is nothing about Google pops up or anything else. This is just plain Java code. Um, so, and where they go, this input and output, we just configure them through particular uh, Spring Cloud Stream configuration option, which is called bindings. Uh, as you see, we bind input to some destination location. In our case, it's going to be pops up subscription to topic and output is bound to filtered locations, which is already topic on Google pops up. Uh, one specific option for uh, Spring Cloud GCP project is uh, project ID where we're going to interact in uh, Google Cloud. So let's see how it works, if it works at all, if our Wi-Fi is our Wi-Fi oh. is great. Yeah, maybe. Uh, what Oleg mentioned it, and I would like to tell that too, that we have automatic content type negotiation. As you see, we have some simple domain model, just Podge with a couple properties from mentioned it before JSON. So as you see in logs, we have constantly updated information from Google, Power, Google pops up topic. Let's see what, what is that about. This is uh, Google Cloud Console where we have our filtered locations topic. And if we take a look into this topic, all our data which we are interested in is already uh, in, belongs to this topic. When we jump to it, we see some subscription on this topic. And what is interesting from Google Cloud Platform is that we can easily connect Google Cloud services to each other. In this case, for demo purpose, we wrote a simple function in Python, which is triggered by push notification subscription from our filtered location. The source code of this function is pretty simple. We just get data and print it out to logs. If we take a look into logs, we will see updates and for you could, locations we are interested in. And you could notice a couple other things. You could probably guess which one of us chose to write the, the Python code. <laughs> <laughs> Reveal, right? Not, not everyone writes Java, but at the same time, here's, you know, we just, we just wrote uh, two microservices in two different languages. Right, and, two completely and they different are connected through Google just Cloud working. Platform. But this is all great for Google Cloud Platform. Uh, the question may be how to pull data from Google Cloud and push it into, for example, Apache Kafka somewhere outside of uh, Google Cloud Platform. Or even on Google Cloud Platform, we do have plenty of users who, who are happy with, with Kafka. Really? OK. Uh, Not as happy as the people <laughs> users. So at this point, I would like to share with you another cool feature from Spring Cloud Stream called multi-binder. The point is we can have several binders on our class pass and uh, specify uh, which binder is responsible to this or that binding configuration. Uh, for the demo purpose, I just wrote a simple test case which starts embedded Kafka, creates filtered locations topic already in Kafka, but as you see, it's the same name, destination name is the same. 
And in body of test case, I just try to be sure that I get five filtered locations from where? From Kafka topic, because I'm going to convince you that we really pull data from. We've got a question. Yeah. Kafka listener, right? That's from Spring Kafka. Yes, exactly, right. Because Spring Kafka is right. Okay. So is it going to work or no? Because as you see, I didn't change any code in our, our production on production level or even in the application properties while test trying to pass because not too much caps looks like around us. That many. Yeah, this actually yeah. this is a live stream, so you don't know. We, right, might, be, exactly, we might be in the middle exactly. of the nighttime. <laughs> Whatever this yeah, is taking. So it passed. <laughs> uh, the trick is that we need to use specific uh, particular magic uh, configuration properties from Spring Cloud Streams and say by, uh, binding where which binder is going to use. So as you see, output in our case is Kafka, but of course we still would like to pull data of, uh, events from PubSub topic. So we say that all other bindings are going to use PubSub. Uh, the trick here is uh, that it doesn't impact our production code that Kafka binder is hidden in the scope test, so it's not visible on uh, production level. I uh, thought this was super neat because we sort of created a problem for ourselves where we said, look, we can have any dependency that has a binder, right? Yes. any middleware, satisfy this dependency, and then we threw two different things at the same time that can satisfy it. Right, so how do you disambiguate? Well, and now we've come up with an elegant solution. Which does it? Correct. That's the magic of auto configuration from Spring Boot. So this is pretty much what we have. Uh, we implemented a simple Spring Cloud Stream application, which take data from Google PubSub, send result of filtering to Power Topic on PubSub, then triggers Cloud Function, and at the same time we uh, push it. Uh, information into Apache Kafka. The question may be how to do this in uh, production level when we really would like to send and to PubSub and to Kafka. For this reason, we need to do custom binding contract and specify several uh, binding outputs and say each, to each of them which binder to use. And then in our code, we need to use the code is here, something like Spring integration is good for that. So that then send to is not going to work, but we need to inject into our microservice those several message channels and send messages to them. So. So we hope that you saw sort of this picture, which was probably evident from the last talk, right? That right. you really you just you just write the application core, and in, in this, this, that's the Spring Cloud Stream application, and you are aware that there's this thing called binder that's that's pushing input into your function and, and grabbing at its output, and the middleware lives in its in its own world. So of course, as we've mentioned. Different middleware has different properties that, that can be sometimes used, but your, your code itself doesn't really have to be aware of it. It's, uh, it. It does matter for your deployment and sort of for your scaling um, more than it does for the application logic. Yes, and if you're interested in more about Spring Cloud Stream, my colleagues Sobichako and Sebi Anandan are going to talk tomorrow about Kafka Streams binders. This is slightly different angle of Spring Cloud Stream where we don't deal with message channels but directly with stream abstraction from platform. And now we get to do something special. It's the last, last button press of the day. The last <laughs> slide. <laughs> Thank you all. Are there any questions? Yeah, you can download the demo so, from repository mentioned there. Yes, 
uh, the, it, the, the way that works is you, you know, you're talking to, to the service over TLS, and then we, we grab the message, we decrypt it in memory, and we encrypt it and store it and in, 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 encrypt it on disk. And then it gets delivered in encrypted form to, the, uh, to a front end talking to the subscriber. That front, front end decrypts it and sends it over TLS in encrypted form. So there are two little windows, like there are two machines that ever get the C message in decrypted form in memory. But everywhere else, it's it's um, it's encrypted. Yes, first trip. Uh, the question was, if you use Spring Cloud Stream, do you need to acknowledge the message? Mm, yes, yeah, Spring Cloud Stream pops up binder, implements acknowledgement automatically. So we do it by default. Yeah, it's done by default, right? No, because it's done on binder implementation level. So we just we just had a conversation about this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did everybody in, in the back hear that? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Again, the, the, biggest, the most important thing is that you f don't act if your code fails. Because that, you know, once, once you act, your data is gone. There was a question in, the, yeah, yes, gentlemen. On For, sub level, yes. if, if, so, we, if we deploy our application in Google Cloud Platform, right, it's done automatically through your account. What I do on my machine, I just downloaded G Cloud SDK and authenticate it three. So yeah, I didn't show that part, but, but in, I, in, I have in it. In reality, locally. every single call you make is associated with, with an identity. It's a service account or a key of a service account. Um, it, it plugs into the GCP sort of IAM system, and you can do all of that stuff. And the way it plugs into, into the binder is it sort of, you, in the environment, you specify sort of where, right. the, there where the credentials live. Um, you don't really have to, that doesn't even have to live at the, at the binder level. Yeah, this is part of Spring Cloud GCP project. We provide uh, yeah. auto configuration for authentication there. So if, if you're deploying on GCP, the, usually your, um, your your credentials will already be there on a machine, and it's sort of, you don't really have to worry about this at all, if, but you could certainly configure them to be something custom. I think this is time. Yeah, 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 maybe. There's another question. Some, right. Yes, sir. So there, there were two questions. How, how, how can I maneuver between hmm. different offices and options, and how, how much control I can have right, if I want to implement a different specific scenario? So the yeah. so just to repeat the let, question, let, 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 the question yeah, is if, if you wanted to use um, features of the middleware that's specific, that are specific to that middleware, right? how, do you, how, do you go, how do you go on level abstraction below? Good, yeah. Most of uh, on Apache Kafka binder, Rabbit binder, we expose some custom properties to configure from Spring Cloud Stream uh, perspective. So you really don't need to do anything in code, just configuration properties. So we're articulated about Right.
Yeah, that's that's big question. But and something. Yeah, can set partition Yes, you can. That's true. So, so in summary, I guess you could. We, there are binders for individual middleware right, things, exactly. right? Yeah. It's just PubSub happens to be probably the the simplest common denominator in terms of um, configuration. In terms of API, does the you know yeah. throughput only, yeah. right? And so it, you don't really have to, to but think about I, that. I believe you can expose a model mm -hmm. and uh, really extract some configuration options, especially for PubSub. Mm -hmm. The question was, how many duplicates do you expect? I mean, everything depends on your client behavior and exactly how long you do, how many, you know, how, how you publish your publishers at, and at how you Delivery client. is at least but one, right? It, it's at least one, but let me, but 1%, right? Like, right, maybe, maybe it's gonna be 1%. The, the, that's really not the, it, the, the trick is that you don't know when it's gonna come, right? So I, I think that's sort of, sort of inherent in the, in the in the this micro, sort of stateless microservices model. You just you have to be ready that two data will come twice. Uh, for those of you walking out, thank you. There is thank you. there is beer downstairs. <laughs>